Fading Voices is a demonstration of arts and cultures that are disappearing. Well, the demonstration kind of showed the people how the snowbird and them lived way back in the old days. Well, the snowbird turkey, I was told by the elders, was the uh, people they hid in, in this woods over here during the, you know, the trail of tears removal. I hope they realize we still exist in this mountains, you know, the Cherokees. That's more like a traditional ways. I think that's very important. We're trying to keep the art from being lost. The world is changing so much, and our elders are passing so fast. We would like to have the younger individuals see something that they might want to pick up and keep the voice from fading. This event takes place every year on the end of May. It's always more Day weekend, the last Saturday of the month. And the first year you come, everybody tries to treat you like family. We're open with open arms. We don't look at color, race, or nothing like that. Everybody that comes is now a part of the family. We're all one brothers and sisters. My mother is Lois Klonohusky, and she started the Fading Voices Demonstration Day 35 years ago. My mother was very active in the snowbird community. She loved her community. She loved being Cherokee. She felt like everybody should know about our history and our culture. So she really promoted that as much as she could. It started out as just a one year event. And then she just, year after year, she just continued on and it just, it kept growing. And she actually funded it out of her own pocket. Um, she passed away in 1999, but it has continued, which is amazing to me. The activities that are ongoing throughout the day are still the same ones that were in the original um, Fading Voices Day, the first one. So we haven't deviated from that. Um, everything is just like it was 35 years ago from the first one. The first time I ever done the Fading Voices, I was so intrigued about learning about the past. You'd be introduced to our women that cook the traditional bean bread, chestnut bread, fat back, and they'd done a lot of the crafts, making flute, doing river cane baskets, uh, pottery, wood carving, the beadwork or the basket making, or playing the stickball or the fish game. Uh, talking the Cherokee language, that's what makes it so special. Everything is fading. Time is evolving and we want more of our people to understand and our kids to understand there's more than life than playing video games and doing stuff like that. Come out here, learn the culture. It's here to keep our tradition alive. Every time you make a point, come back to the center field, I'll throw the ball up. This was for disputes. The villages would get together and they'd play this game. Whoever won the game won the dispute would go to 12 points. I'm, I'm really proud of this community and I'm really proud of what we do for our feeding voices. This festival is for anybody interested in the old fashioned way and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's just anybody, no matter who it is. The festival was created to show the respect for our lost ones and our elders and letting, letting them know that, hey, we haven't forgotten what we was taught and how we was raised and I'd love for people to come out and enjoy it and see it. Just come to Fading Voices. You will love it. It will blow your mind. The Snowbird Cherokee Fading Voices Festival is usually held the last Saturday in May at Little Snowbird Baptist Church in Robbinsville. For more information, go to grahamcountytravel.com.